But what I have here, as you can see, is two photo a photograph and a blank canvas that I've toned. I'm working with just three colors, red, blue, and yellow, and I'm going to mark this canvas off. Now, I don't normally do this myself anymore. I can kind of eyeball it pretty safe, but I'm going to just mark it off so you can see where the divisions are that represent the divisions how I grafted out on my paper. Now, you could actually do that more thoroughly with a, with a measurement, but I do it quickly like that. That's just my, my way of drawing. Then I find a mark, like I see here, and I'm going to mark that spot on my canvas here. Let's get it strong enough. I can see it. I hope you can. Mark it here. It's just above halfway there. Here is just above halfway again, up here. And then I'm going to connect those lines like I see them coming on down. So that's that first line that I have on my canvas. The next line is across here, and it comes up about to there, comes across, comes across, it stays below that halfway point, and comes on across. The next one, this, was, this line ended up being a little bit too low, so I'm going to move it up where it belongs. And the next one comes right up to that line there. So I'm going to take that line here, comes across like that, comes back down, comes back up, and then down again. And I'm looking here where it crosses, and it crosses just below there. So there's my, my mountain ranges, and here's that. Now I'm going to locate my path, which is just below. That's where it starts. It goes just below this point, and it goes all the way over to that line here, right there. And then it comes across here, and it finishes off over here. So that's my line for my path. So I've got that. I'm going to curve it a little bit more like I see. And then this one just follows. And this one goes right to that point there and go here. So there's my basic drawing, how I start a painting. Now I'm going to skip from here and go ahead and start painting. So the first thing I want to do is mix a color of blue that I'll put in the background for the mountain range. And I want to see this in a basic, simple group of colors. I can use a little mineral spirits, or I can just do it straight. Add a little red to it to tone it down. And let's show you what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to take that whole mountain there and wash it in. So I've got some paint like that. And that mountain part is darker than the rest, but it's all going to be pretty much dark to begin with. So I've got like that. And the top one's just a little bit lighter, so I can add a little bit of white to it. And I'm not going to be real concerned about the drawing, just enough to get the feeling I want in there. So that's my mountain, like that. And keep it real simple when you do this. If I want you to, to really just enjoy being able to draw and paint without being overly concerned about getting your drawing just right. So that's that first start. Then I can see that I've got a, a, a step, that's my darkest value, so I put that in first. And then I've got my path, which has some dark accents, which I've already got there. Then I've got a patch of green back here that I've got that I want to show that's a little bit darker than the rest of the green. So I'm just going to take my green and make it with my blue and my yellow, like that. And I'm just going to pop it, pop it in there now. It's going to be a little bit more blue as, it, as it's back there for right now. And I'm paying kind of attention to where it's, it's coming across. And it comes across to the path right here. And it comes on down here. There's a little bit. Let's just make it simple again. Let's just fill in that whole patch like that. So it's simple. And then let's fill in this dark, darker green that runs along here. There like that. Now you could actually just do this in black and white or brown and white. It doesn't have to be a lot of color. The idea is just get that paint on. Don't be afraid. Get used to putting paint on the canvas. Now I want to go to a much lighter tone. And I want that to be more yellow. I might have to put more paint out before I get too far along. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and pop, pop, pop that paint color in there right in here because my photograph has a little bit more grass in this area. And then there's a little bit thicker grass that's darker as I come right up in here in this area here. So I'm going to take that and it goes all the way across to that spot like that. So I've just changed the value slightly. So I haven't painted the whole thing in one color. I've just changed that value slightly. And then there's a rock formation that comes across here so the grass gets a little bit darker and comes up. And there, that's that. So that's not too bad. 
and that's not, not taking a lot of drawing expertise. It just kind of gets you a nice start. Let's go ahead and tone in the sky and get that going. Now the sky is basically gray in this picture. So I'm going to take my blue and mix my yellow and red together and make a blue-gray sky. So I just use that white and brought it into the center of the painting where I have all these colors already. And I've got maybe just a little bit more blue I want to pull over. There, like that. Now I'm going to just go ahead and put that sky in, in a nice gray tone. And if I add a little bit more yellow or red to it, it changes the color of gray slightly. So I'm just going to take it all in one color, keep it really simple. So I want you to be able to just start off painting simple. I'll take this painting to a further degree on my own. I'll put it on fast time for you so you can see it. But that gives you a good chance to see how simple you can paint this in without a lot of detail. Again, a little bit of red in there. But all three of the primaries together is going to make a gray tone. So there's that tone there. And then I've got some whiter color on the canvas, and I've got a little bit of blue sky up above. So I'm going to pull down the blue sky, take this white and this blue, and I'm just going to shape out those clouds. And you can be more precise. I'm not trying to be so precise and perfect with it as I am, just to kind of demonstrate to you how simply you can put this on. That's what I'm most interested in. I see a little bit of extra accent of dark in the clouds right here. So I'm just going to put a little accent of dark in, going across that way, and let that kind of blend in with the color I've already got, just to accent that dark a little stronger. And there's another little accent of dark that goes across here. So I'm putting that into it, just to get a little more variety in the clouds. There, so that works pretty good. I like to move my paint around. So where I've got this blue on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of that blue tone and a little bit of this in here. And now I've picked up some green tone, and I'm going to mark, mark that in here. I see a little bit of a hill right here that's got some yellow in it. So I'm just going to mark a little bit of that blue-yellow in there and here, just so I have some of that color there. And then even this side of the mountain right in here has a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. Now I don't have that mountain quite as dark as I need it. So it's not coming off quite as well as I'd like, but that gets me started still. And it puts a little bit of color into that mountain area. So I want to go darker. So I'm going to use a violet tone. Hope I'm keeping my palette where you can see it. And I'm going to darken up right here. Just a few touches. Just come across and darken that up. And then that mountain also has more foliage on it here. So there's some dark here. I think actually the clouds are casting that shadow for that mountain there, like that, and it goes on across. So a little, and then I want this back mountain in between to actually be darker with just a little bit of green. So I don't really want any white in this, but I want a little bit of yellow with the blue and make this darker. And I want this here to feel a lot darker. So I really have more of that pattern of dark running through my picture there like that. And I've got another little light mountain there that I want to emphasize it, but there's a dark mountain. So see, I'm building on a basic value shape and then going back and adding a couple more values in between either way to give it more depth, give it more form. So when you, hope I'm keeping that plate where you can see it. There, so that's coming along nice. I've got a little bit of red on my brush there. I like that, that's, that's really nice. So. Let's see, accent that path a little bit more and show a little shadow maybe right there. Now I've got this pattern just a little bit darker right in there, coming across. And I've got a lighter mountain in the distance. It's really pale and it's kind of gray, so I don't want a really bright blue. I want a very gray blue, so a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red in it. And I'm going to put that other mountain in it. It's right back here. And like that, and it comes right in between these two mountains. Maybe a little paler yet, comes right in between, and then it actually goes right across in here, comes right off the page, right in there, and comes up. And it's not showing up quite light enough, I think, for you to see it. I can see it, but I don't know that you can. So it's right there, 
another little mountain in the distance. Now I've got some white and yellow and blue on my brush. If I take that color and add a little bit of red tone yellow to it, I'll get kind of a beigey tone. And I want to take that beige tone that's kind of a gray beige. And I've got to get a little bit of yellow. It doesn't have so much green in it. Might have to put out some more yellow. Let's see if I can get it in here strong enough. It's pretty good. A little yellow and red to make it more brownish tone. Too much yellow, too much red. Let's see where I am now. Need more yellow paint. But I'm just going to go ahead and bring some of this in with the yellow paint. Let's see if I can get some more yellow over here. And bring some yellow paint in. And there's my white. Now I want to just get a feeling for some of this stone in here. And I'm not going to try to cover, the, cover, cover that canvas 100%, but I want to get this back up a little higher and get it blended in a little bit with some stone, some sand color in there. And get this right in here a little bit more accurate for some color. And notice I'm not trying to color it. I'm actually trying to keep a nice painterly quality to it so that it's not totally... Uh, just filled in like I would a coloring book. And I'm going to take that center path and try to delineate it a little bit better so you can see it. And like that. And if the path comes closer, I'll let it get a little bit darker. So I'm picking up a little bit more color as I go. Picking up a little bit of that red and blue and to darken it up. So I'm constantly transitioning my values and colors to make more a feeling of depth in my pictures. And I'm not trying to blend this paint out at all. I like the texture. So now I've got that working out pretty nice. I'm going to put some rocks in here. Just like I see, there's rocks everywhere in this particular subject matter, this path. So this is very much how I'd paint if I was painting outdoors. I try to break it down pretty simply. I'm going to have to clean my palette for a minute and get started again. So I've got more white paint. I'm going to put it off to the side over here so I can not run out. Should have started with more. I'll know better next time. And take some blue and some yellow. I need to get more paint. Now, I want to get a feeling of some of the white clouds. When I ever paint a white cloud, I don't paint just pure white. I'm going to take white and add a little bit of color. It could be blue or yellow, red even. But I've got a little bit of color in that white. And I want to feel some of the cloud formation in there. So I'm going to add just a little bit more blue tone in it so it's not just quite so pure white. Got a little yellow in there to warm it up. And I want to bring in that white cloud that I see on the side like that, feel a little bit more formation. And the cloud works its way across and it builds itself back up here just a little bit. And again, don't color it like a coloring book. Keep the paint kind of flowing. See what ha Pay attention to how the paint's blending in. So you have a little bit more interest to it. So it's not flat. And I'm going to take that and add just a tiny bit of green to it, yellow and blue and make that just a little bit lighter over here. Do I feel a little bit more cloud? Put a little pink in it, add some color. Always add a little bit of color to your white, just something to, to make it more interesting. Now, it's got a nice bright cloud bank back there that I want to describe. And then here, and then still here, some more clouds coming in, coming down this way. So that's a nice pattern. Nice and simple. Maybe let's fill this in over here too. 
and put a little red in that. So it's not boring, just one color blue. I, I like a messy palette to a certain degree just because then I can blend my colors more easily. So I've got that happening. This cloud I want to bring over a little bit more to where I want it, and this cloud comes up a little bit more. Notice how I just blend that paint right in as I go so that the paint actually is, is picking up and I'm moving it around. And here, like I want a little bit more light in there, so I'm gonna just bring some more paint in and bring my value back up over here. Let's fill that in. And up in the very back here, there's a little bit brighter cloud formation, which is kind of nice because it keeps me in the center. This could be toned down a little, a little cloud there. So I think that's working okay. Now let's try to put some de detail in the mountain itself and a little bit more in the, in the actual path. So as the path goes, comes back or forward, it's usually gonna get lighter somewhere. So I'm gonna make that a little bit more light right in there. It's just so it's transitioning. And then again, another little piece of light back in here. I wanna take the brush and get some more white paint on my brush, just a little bit of warm color in it, but not too much, that was too much. Could use that for something else, I could have. Let's get back to some nice clean white paint and just a tad of blue in it, not too much. And I wanna put this piece of snow bank in. It comes right down, so here's my middle. Here's my mountain here, and it separates that light and that dark of that mountain. So I'm just gonna take my brush like that and put that little bit of snow bank in. And then over here, I've got another snow bank that, that really is pretty strong. It goes right up along the edge of this mountain. And it comes right on down this little valley. Now, every time I touch the canvas, I pick up a little bit of paint. So if I don't go back and mix a little bit more, I'm gonna actually have a dirty brush that's got too much of the wrong color paint on it. But I like this process of actually working without cleaning my brush too much, paying attention to how the paint goes on, twisting and turning the brush to get the effect I want, and paying attention to how much paint it's picking up, what shape it's making. So I'm actually able to c control a little bit the feeling of the lighter dark on that paint as I do it. And the more I can do with one stroke, instead of a whole lot of strokes, the better. So I'm looking to work with one stroke as much as possible. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of warmth on this mountain right here, just to feel a little bit of sunlight there. And a little bit more sunlight. And, put, and I see a little bit of green in my photograph, so I'll put a little bit of green in it. And I'm just touching right on top. So I'm not filling it in with a color that's already uh, all one color. I'm creating a new color on the canvas as I go. And a little bit of value in here the same way. So I feel a little bit of, of transition and change. There's also a little bit of change of color back in this part of the mountain, right in here that is kind of nice of that nice bright sunlight that comes up. I'm gonna move that mountain over just a little bit. There's a little bit of sunlight there. And let's put a little bit darker shape that's more formed in now, because we'll re redo this shape a little stronger. So I'm gonna go back to a nice dark blue shape, and I want this shape to be more accurate. So I'm just gonna put that shape in there, and that's gonna help form where that mountain is, and then in here too, just to help reshape a little bit. And there's a little dark edge that goes around the top of that that I want to form in there. And I'm going to take this mountain and push it over just a little bit. And it's got a little bit of green warmth in there too, green and gray. So I'm going to pick up some of my green and gray and I'm going to redo that little slice in there of white. And then I've got some light back in here too. So I've got that going. I've got some gray on my brush. I've got some gray going on here. So I'm just gonna bring some of that color down in here. And that's nice because it helps to move that color a little bit. And I'm gonna put it in in choppy blocks because it could be actually the shadows underneath some of these rocks. So these rocks have a lot of little shadows going on. So as I bring in this little bit of a dark pattern in here that's got my dark tones, I could start feeling the rocks building up going back. And by having colors that are in the rest of the painting, 
it's nice to move those colors around a little bit. So this is just dark accents for underneath where the stones will be lighter on top. I hope you're having fun trying to do something similar yourself, not taking a lot of time. I don't want this painting to take a long time. But it's not about, about time, it's about the enjoyment of just letting some color move on that canvas. Notice I didn't pick up any extra paint just then. I just went ahead and, and brought some paint across that I felt was going to move that color again. So I'm going to bring up some light in here, some green that I see in my photograph that it says there's a brighter light back there than what I've got. And now I want a really bright light back there. I want to feel that sunshine on that mountain. So I've got to pick up some nice bright yellow and try to make that more yellow there. Get some yellow and white there. And I feel a really nice bright light right in here that comes down that meadow where the sun's coming through the clouds. And that helps, that bright light back in there even helps give me a little bit more feeling of distance in the mountain so that that light from the sunlight in the distance really works nice. And then the other light isn't quite as bright, but there's still a nice strong green to that that's right in here. And I'll tone it down with a couple extra brush strokes so it's not quite as bright. So I feel the distance there. And then I've got this little piece of mountain right there that I didn't have yet. So now there I've got that put in there. Now oh, I've got some green on my brush. Let's use it. So I'm going to move it around here. I'm going to bring it on the path here a little bit more. It comes out across, comes down. And I'm just following a shape. So I start on a shape. I see the shape coming up like that and then follow it back down again. And then I see a little bit stronger shape right in here that's green. And I've got it kind of looking too blue. So I'm gonna try and make that a little bit more green tone right in here between the two. So I have a transition of value a little bit. Maybe pick up some of this color and move it over there. So that's nice. Feel the distance. I'm, I'm happy with the way that's working. And then again, let's just go back in and try to get some more of this brighter green that's in the foreground. And just do it with a nice brush stroke. Have some variety in your brush stroke. Don't have everything always the same brush stroke. And that's really close to all I want to do with this painting to say, that's my story. I am going to go with a few more accents of dark now. And the bit, at the end, I try to put accents of dark, accents of light in, make more depth. And I feel like there's a little bit more dark up in here that would be nice to help bring that closer. You notice I sometimes will put a large stroke and then I'll just work over the edge a little bit so it's not so pronounced. So a larger stroke, maybe pick up more color in that. Let's try some red tone that brings it really closer. So there, like that. And my edges need to be broken now. So my edge on that path is way too hard it really uh, makes that path too divided. So I'm going to mix up a nice light color for the, for the white path. And I'm going to start blocking in little pieces of light. And I want that to even be lighter. And that right here, the path really breaks. And there's a lot of light that comes into it. Right here, there's more rocks. So now my darks start to be more minimized as I feel more of the rocks being formed and the dark helps to support the shape for the rocks. So I have a way to quickly and easily create those rocks. So I can keep that paint so it's not so there and that light coming through and I feel little pieces of rocks starting to develop and breaking that path more. And the path, when I break it, I'm picking up some other color paints and that's good. I wanna break that path, move that color around as much as I can. And some larger rocks and stones in here so it's very simple, again, not something that's really overdone. You're not trying to draw a stone. You're just trying to give the impression of the stone, the impression of the rocks, because it's a rocky place. It's a mountain. It's up in Colorado, right next to the very peak in Colorado. It's a path up there that is a beautiful hikes and wonderful views and well worth visiting. I had a great time up there. I actually saw a lot of elk 
that was great fun to see herds of elk come and go and see them come and lay down along the path and then and then stop and then take off and walk off again casually. They feel very non-threatened there, so they have a, a great life existence. They don't have to worry about people or anything trying to hurt them. I don't think they've got too many predators. And it was just really a, a great experience to be able to be there for a couple of hours. I painted plein air, did several paintings, and those paintings are uh, great memories for me of my trip that I just love having. And now I can go back and revisit some of my trip and say, hey, I remember what was happening when I was on this trail. And I got now a chance to paint it and have some more memories that I'm saving. So I'm gonna really enjoy this 30 painting series. I don't know if I'll get them all done in the 30 days. I was just, uh, I've had some technical challenges of trying to figure out how to use my uh, videos and how to do things right. I know for some people that's so simple they wouldn't be able to understand why I have trouble. But I was going to try to do it different ways and, and decided, hey, I'll just start painting. I'm not having fun unless I'm painting. And I was doing too much with the technical part. So now I'm painting and I'm feeling like this is a good day. This is the way I want my life to be, to be able to just put in some nice colors easily, nice values. So to see how my value changes are starting to come up a little bit more so that there's more changes in what's happening on this painting. There you go. So I don't think I've taken too terribly long to do this. I might do some refinements yet. Oh, I know, see, there is one piece of this mountain back here that I didn't put back in. And I think that's important when I'm trying to paint a specific area, I want it to be that specific area the right way. So it's important to me to get those little bits of mountains back in there that I remember seeing and that I recording somewhat accurately, but also more was just the feel for the location, not everything having to be exact. So there we go. A little bit more sunlight on that one mountain, maybe. I like that feeling, a little bit more light in there. And this one piece of snow coming down might be a little bit bigger than I want, so I'll just push it back. To see how I can rearrange and change that, if something's not quite the size I'd like it to be, I can just come in and push that painting, push that paint around a little bit and make it narrower. So I might not put it in perfect the first time, but as I go along, I'll be able to make slight changes in it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope it wasn't too long to bore you. I try to keep it simple and sweet and uh, hope that that gives you a feeling of the Rocky Mountains that I enjoyed. Gives me that feeling. I remember walking. I can smell the air again. It was great. Have a great day and have some fun painting. This is a great time during coronavirus to be able to, to get some new skills and to have some fun with painting.